Hello and welcome back. In this part, we're going to study loops in Rust programming language. So in programming, there are often situations where we need to repeat a block of code multiple times. So actually, Rust provides three types of loops, the loop, the while, and the for loop. So the loop keyword tells Rust to execute a block of code repeatedly until you explicitly tells it to stop. So it's unconditional loop. It will continue running, 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 running until you tells it to stop. Let's take an example. Let's, for instance, do loop. So you simply will type the word loop. You will open close curly braces. And let's print, for instance, hello world without the break. And let me just minimize this bit. Let's do like that. Maximize the terminal and do cargo run. Of course, it will continue running hello world to the infinity. Unless, of course, you will stop it by hitting control C. So you saw that when we have ran this program, it continually printed hello world until we manually stopped it. So that's not very good. Let's get back. Let me just comment those lines out. Now let's check out if we want to return values from loop. The book tells us here that one of the uses of a loop is to retry an operation that you know might fail, such as checking whether a thread has completed its job. You might also need to pass the result of the operation out of the loop to the rest of your code. And to do this, you can add the value you want uh, returned after the break expression. So the break expression you can use to stop your loop. That's why tab nine has automatically put the break after we have tried that last example, when we have printed hello world. So that value will be returned out of the loop. So you can use it as shown here. So you can see in this code, a mutable variable counter, which is set to zero initially, then we have a result variable assigned to it a loop. This loop has inside it a counter that's incremented by one. Then inside that loop, we have a condition. So here we are using the if expression that we have learned the last lesson. That's why the conditions and the loops together are called control flow. This condition says that if counter is equal to 10, we want to break and then we want to return counter multiplied by two. So the counter is going to start from zero and it's going to increment by one until it hits number 10. Then it will take the number 10, it will multiply it by two, and then it will print it here down in the console. And of course, the result is going to be 20. Also to show you that, I have copied the code. Let's go ahead and run it. Let's do cargo run. And of course, the result is 20. You can do any sort of operations. Um, you can do till 20 and instead of multiplication, we can do um, minus, let's do 100 for instance. And we can say here the new result is, let's run that again. You can see here the new result is minus 80. All right, it did the calculation, it has printed the result. Also, we can create loop labels. I'm going to show you loop labels. So when you deal with loops nested within one another, that's where you use the loop labels. Um, so nested loops, for those of you who do not know what the flip I'm talking about, it's like uh, layers of cake. So uh, you have a loop, inside it there is another loop, and inside the other loop another loop, and so on. So it's like, you know, the Russian nested doll. Um, basically, the break and continue statements are going to apply to the innermost loop by default. If we'll get back to our book, you can find this example. This is the main function inside it. So again, we have a main function inside it, a mutable variable. So again, this is the main function inside it. We have a mutable count. It's set to zero initially. Then we have this uh, single quotation counting underscore up and colon. This loop label has a name, which is counting underscore up. So why we actually have assigned a label? Again, as I said, when you deal with nested loops, the typical behavior or the, the default behavior is that the break and continue statements are going to apply 
to the innermost loop by default. We have an outer loop and inner loop. That's the first one. And that's the second one. So this is the outer and this is the inner. Okay. So this label here, so what will happen is that we're going to print count is equal to whatever the count is, then you're going to print that count. Again, we have a new variable called remaining, which is a mutable variable, which is set to 10. Okay, so this is in the body of the outer loop. For the inner loop, you have print ln remaining equals to remaining. So initially is set to 10. And we're going to check out if the remaining is equal to nine, we're going to break outside of the loop. But notice this condition, if it's met, this part is going to be, uh, you know, will not exist anymore because we'll break outside of the loop. But the count is going to continue. So the count is going to continue until it hits two. When it hits two, it's going to break off the counting up, which is the label. Let's go ahead and run that exactly as expected. So count is zero, remaining is 10, remaining is nine, and count is one. Again, printing, remaining is 10, remaining is nine, and count is two, then remaining is 10. So I have a question for you. What if we'll put the remaining minus equal to one outside of that inner loop? We'll put it here with the outer loop. Of course, that remaining printing is going to, you know, print forever. Why? Because there is no decrementing, there is no action on that remaining. So that condition, if remaining is equal to nine will not be met in the first place, it will come on that line and will print it forever. Of course, after it will print the count. So let's go ahead and try that. I made quickly control C just to show you and we'll do here the last loop so the while loop runs the loop as long as a condition holds true so you can say simply while number is equal to 10 for example do this so conditional loops with while a program will often need to evaluate a condition within a loop so while condition is true, the loop runs. When the condition ceases to be true, the program calls break, stopping the loop. It's possible to implement behavior like this using combination of loop, if else, and break. You could try that now in a program, blah, blah, blah. So that's their example. We're going just to write it real quick here. So let's have mutable number. So that number is equal to three. And we can say here, while number is not equal to zero, for instance. In that case, I want to um, print ln the number. And here we will decrement um, the number by one. So number minus equal to one. So what will that do simply is that um, it's going to evaluate the number to three. So that's fine. And we'll say here that while the number is not equal to zero, which is true, we're going to print ln the number. While that is happening, we're going to decrement in each iteration that number three by one. And then after we can say here, break for instance, or you can do anything else. You can, for instance, do print ln, um, hey. All right, so if we'll do like this, let's do cargo run. It's going to print three, two, one, hey. If you will do break, it just printed three in the first iteration and then it broke outside of the loop and it has printed hey. Um, we can also loop through a collection with for loop. So what I mean by that is um, if you have an array, let's say this is a, an um, integer array from one uh, to six, and let's say, for instance, that for element in A, we want to print the element. 
All right. So for each iteration in that array, we're going to print the element. So it's going to print one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. Let's go ahead and try that. So you can see here that it has printed everything. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, you can do the same thing for any type of array. So let's say, for instance, let me actually do let b is equal to and let's have here any strings. So those are strings, for example, so A, B, C, D, E, F. And so we can repeat that actually, instead of A, we'll have B. Instead of element, we'll say uh, letter. You can see here from one to six, and then from A to F. Alright guys, so that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.